Question. Is the Bible version issue based on facts or faith? Well, let me ask you another question before we answer that. Um, when Jesus Christ was here on the earth, were there reasons, physical reasons, logical type of reasons why people could have rejected Jesus Christ? Let me explain what I mean by that. Hey, everybody. This coming week... I've been given word that God himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth, God is coming to our town. Huh? God will be physically manifesting himself right here a week from today. Back in the first century. Really? Well, tell us when he arrives. Week goes by. Hey, everybody, everybody gather around, gather around. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Right here he is. He's God manifest in the flesh. The whole crowd <gasps> turns around and looks. Wait, that guy? I saw him out along the road the other night. He's, he's homeless, isn't he? Wait, I want to wait a second. That's, that's Jesus. Yeah, he's a carpenter. Yeah, his... He's got kind of a questionable birth, you know? I mean, I've heard some things. I've heard some rumors about a Roman soldier and his wife, you know, or his, and the Mary. There was a kind of a relationship there. That guy? Would people have had a, not a right, but would people have had a reason, we'll say, to reject Jesus Christ based on, based on some facts about him? Yes. Let's be honest about that. Yes, they would. Jesus was the manifest word. This is the written word. Are there some reasons why people could reject this book based on certain aspects and truths about it? Yes, there are. You say, like, what are you talking about, Brother Brian? I'll give you a good one. The translators to the reader. They did not say that this book, they said it's a translation. They didn't say that it is the perfect, inspired, infallible, and errant Word of God. They didn't say that. Could you reject the King James Bible based on what the translator said about it? Sure, you could. I don't because I realize they're just sinful men that God used. God could have used the Pope to write this book. God could have said, okay, I'm going to set down every single Jesuit. I'm going to have him write out this King James Bible and it'll come out perfect. So it doesn't bother me one bit. More on that later. Give you another one against the King James Bible. Erasmus, Desiderius Erasmus, was a Roman Catholic. Say, huh? Well, Erasmus is the guy that took the Greek Textus Receptus, some of the Greek manuscripts that were not in line with Jerome's, you know, Latin Vulgate, and he started to compile them, and he came out with the first Greek Latin uh, New Testament. Then he came out with another edition and another edition, and one of the editions he dedicated to the Pope and whatever else. And, and you know, later on in his life, he wasn't really accepted as by the Catholic Church, and I think he was actually buried outside of the Catholic Church. But he never formally came out and said the Catholic Church is the Antichrist and whatever else. Um, so then the guy that actually was there compiling a lot of the Greek manuscripts, he was a Catholic? Wouldn't that make the King James Bible a Catholic translation? We get that from these new version people. Uh, no, because the Catholic Church has always forbidden this book to be read by Catholics. If it was a Catholic translation, they would accept it. <laughs> uh, point number one. Point number two, it was not Erasmus' text, which underlies the King James Bible. It was a much later edition. I think it was Stephanus or Beza or something like that. Guys that made newer editions uh, based on more manuscripts that were coming in, and so they revised it and updated it and whatever else. Uh, then you had the, the newest editions of the Texas Receptus were put out by the Elzever brothers after this was written. So the Texas Receptus went through a long line of editing and re-editing and everything else. Um, but if somebody looked at that, they could say, hey, Erasmus. Erasmus was had a part in this whole thing. Uh, Erasmus compiled manuscripts. He didn't write manuscripts. Okay, He didn't write the New Testament. He was compiling ancient manuscripts. We only had a few of them. How many does he need to lay out? You know, thousands and thousands of them. 
And why would Erasmus need to look at all of them? You just find the best copies, the newer ones, not the really ancient ones. You want to kind of preserve those. So you find newer manuscripts, you say, okay, they all line up with the ancient ones. You know, received text, this is what 99 plus percent of the Greek manuscripts out there, the extant, in other words, found manuscripts, they line up with the Textus Receptus. That's a matter of documented fact. So Erasmus says, okay, well, then I'll just take a couple of the better copies and I'll compile them and make a Greek Latin New Testament. Not a problem, you see. Again, I wouldn't reject the King James Bible because Erasmus was not a hardcore Bible-believing Christian. God can use anybody. But you see what I'm saying? Somebody could say, based on that and on the translators, what they wrote, and on some of the early editions of the King James Bible, the 1611, had some spelling problems and whatever else, you know. And so, therefore, it couldn't be God's perfect word. It had to be changed. And, it, yeah, the English language was changing. Yes, the, the typeset was all put in upside down and backwards in order for the pages to be printed correctly. Try doing that and not making any mistakes. Well, shouldn't, if it's God's perfect word, shouldn't God have somehow been there and appeared and had his holy angels printing the Bibles? No, if he did that, then people wouldn't read it. They'd be putting it in some glass case and building a shrine around it or something. You see, there's arguments back and forth is what I'm trying to say. So can you really base the Bible version issue on fact alone? No, you can't. I'll show you another way of saying it. Here we have an older edition. I have the newer one down there, but an older edition of this devil's book here, James White's book, The King James Only Controversy. All right? And the new version people say, oh, that's a good book. That's the one that you need to get. That's the one that will destroy your faith. I mean, uh, 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 c clear up this King James only confusion. Um, but then I would say, okay, here you have James White's book. But how about Peter Ruckman's book that refutes this stupid nonsense over here? Well, I heard that James White you know, was going to, def to uh, debate Peter Ruckman. And Peter Ruckman backed out of the debates. And he was too scared to... Uh, debate James White. And I say, yeah, but the reason that he backed out of it was because James White just kept on changing the rules and Ruckman finally said, look, I'm busy. I'm a busy man. I don't have time for your childish little nonsense. Yes, but I found it... You see? You see the problem when you deal with facts alone? You can find enough quote-unquote facts to reject the King James Bible. And you can find enough facts, facts to reject Jesus Christ. You can. Jewish rabbis. Well, the Messiah, when he comes, he's supposed to fulfill this verse and this verse and that verse. And Jesus, he, you know, if he was the Messiah, he would have fulfilled everything in the first century. Uh, no. There are certain things that he would have fulfilled if the Jews had accepted him as their Messiah. They didn't. So those were put off until the thousand-year reign. Again, I did a whole study on that, answering a Jewish rabbi's you know, objections, objections to Jesus. But see, if you just want facts, just the facts, you can look at certain facts and then ignore other ones. And I used to get into this thing years ago. Oh boy, the time I spent as a single man when I first got on YouTube and I went back and forth with these new version guys and over this reading and that reading and, you know, Acts 12, 4. Well, um, according to Josephus, Herod was a Jew and it proselyted the Jews and he would have celebrated Passover and he would have this and would have that. Well, then I, you have to go and you have to look up what Josephus said exactly. You say, well, you're taking him out of context here. You do this and you, and it's all this stuff back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, and so many times I've in dealing with these new version people, you, they bring up a contradiction in the King James Bible. I answer it. And then they say yes, and they do a little rebuttal. And then I say, okay, but here you go. And then they say, okay, you know, but you know, if you're saying that there, what about this over here? And then you go over to another argument. And you go from Acts 12, 4 to now uh, 1 John 5, 7, the Johannine comma. Is it supposed to be in there? Well, this there are no early manuscripts have you know no early manuscripts that have it in and whatever. Well, I can show you church father citations of it, you know, very early on. Well, yes, okay. But what about Mark chapter 9, verses 44 and 46? What about the last couple of verses there in the book of Mark? What about that? What about the theory of conflation? Huh? <laughs> and pretty soon you start, you know, you just, all you're doing is just back and forth, back and forth. 
James White says this, Peter Ruckman says that, and he answers it, but he answers it, and then he answers it, and then he answers back, and then and the whole thing is done, and James White guys say, yay, we crushed the opposition, and Ruckman's guys, yay, we destroyed the foolish idiot over here. And what are you left with? Both sides walking away thinking that they won. Is it about facts? Not really. I mean, the facts are there. You want to see them for the King James Bible? I have lots and lots of books right here, down in, and I have a lot of the books that show you all the manuscript evidence and everything else, all the arguments for the King James Bible. Sure, but uh, when you get right down to it, just get the King James Bible and try it out. Hey, you know what, Brother Brian? I, I read a bunch of reports for uh, Camu Camu. The tropical berry from South America that's very high in vitamin C. I think it's the second highest source of vitamin C in the world. The other one is a, a beet or something like that. I think some Russian beets or something. If I have that correct, if I don't, I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure it's a, a beet of some kind that has a very high level of vitamin C. I've heard some good things about it. Yes, well, I've heard some bad things about it. Well, you know, there is some good to it, but unfortunately the way it's processed is bad. Well, that depends on the company that you go with. Well, I go with this certain company here. Yes, that's good, but that company also produces this, so I couldn't really trust them with that. <laughs> or you can just get some and try it for yourself and see what happens. You understand? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now let's get into the scriptures. I want to save you time that you don't have to worry about debating, endless debates. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Going over this verse many times, but I will continue to go back to this verse because it's logical. It makes sense. If this book is God's word, if this is his perfect, pure, holy word, to the exclusion of the other ones, the NIV and everything else, I'd go like that because they're down on that shelf. Um, if this is God's pure word, you know what? It will work for you. You know what my first Bible version was? I don't have it anymore. I got rid of it, but it was a New American, New American Standard Bible. See how it looks just like the King James Bible? See? My first Bible was a New American Standard. Did it work for me? Well, it worked in messing me up. No, it didn't work for me. How about the King James Bible? Uh, yeah, it's changed my life. You see, I'm such a numbskull. Hear that? Um, I'm such a numbskull. I believe that no other book exists but the King James Bible. When it comes to God's perfect written word. I have the Greek and the Hebrew down here that under, underlie the King James Bible. I don't even waste time on them. Unless I have to look up some kind of word or something or whatever, somebody brings up a question. or I don't read them. I don't even want to waste time learning those languages. Why would I? I've tried this out. Hey, you know what happens uh, when I get start to get a little bit sick? Start to feel a little bit a little bit of sore throat here and whatever else. I was not very smart. I was outside and didn't have enough warm clothing on. Got a little chill and whatever in the wintertime. I take Camu Camu. Some uh, medical goon comes along and he says, I actually, no, uh, you're not educated. You're not a qualified doctor. Uh, Camu Camu, that's, that's kind of weird. Cuckoo stuff, quack doctory, you know, and, and all this stuff, witchcraft, you know, and witch doctors and all this. Um, I don't, I don't mess with that. What you really need, young man, is some antibiotics. Come on in here. We'll give you a nice prescription of these petrochemical drugs. Uh, no. No. You know why? Because I've proven that Camu Camu works for me. I've proven that that high level of vitamin C can get me out of any kind of sore throat or anything else within 24 hours. Not true for antibiotics. I was on those, by the way, in the past. I was on the pharmaceutical drugs. I went to the doctor and got the cough syrup, the cherry cough syrup, the NyQuil and all that other Robitussin and all this junk. I tried that stuff. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work. 
you know, it worked a few times or whatever, but it doesn't work every time. High levels of nutrition, superfoods, oh, they work. They work for me. They can work for you. Try it out. See what I'm saying? We can both present facts. I could debate any doctor out there on the uh, pokey thing there. But you know what? It ultimately comes down to what works. See, I don't get my immune system from a needle. I get my immune system from eating and exercising, proper rest, and also from the Lord. Oh, we can synthetically, you know, give you immunity. <laughs> no, you can't. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you understand everything in this book? Can you understand every single argument that the new version people come out with and everything else? No, you can't. You can't see perfectly 100% of all the truth that underlies this book. Take some faith. It's not all about facts, in other words. There, are, there is faith involved. Verse 2, For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the wor worlds were framed by the word of God, lowercase w, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hmm. Um, how do you know that uh, this world didn't evolve? Because I have a Bible that says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, heavens and the earth. That's how I know. Because the Word of God told, told me so. Told me so? <laughs> the Word of God said so. And I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, okay, let me consider this. Logically consider. And I look out there at nature and I think, creation? Yeah. Absolutely. The beauty and the complexity and everything out there, it had to have been created. Random explosion at some unknown time in the past? <laughs> I don't think so. Verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that, his, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Interesting uh, word there, translation. Um, was Enoch's translation, uh, when he was translated, was that superior to the original? I've heard this argument made by some of the brethren. It's quite a good argument, actually. Yeah, it was superior. Is this book here, this King James Bible, this translation, is this better than the original autographs? <gasps> Some new versionist right now is having a heart attack and just, they're hammering right now. Their keys are almost breaking. Heretic! <laughs> In the comments. How dare he spoke against the original autographs. <gasps> it's better than the originals. There are some things in the Greek manuscripts and whatever else, there's some confusion there. I don't say that the Greek or the Hebrew is perfect. In the sense of... Uh, perfectly lining up with everything. Um, I believe the English is perfect. There are some var There's variation among some of the different manuscripts is what I'm saying. There's no perfect Greek New Testament. Okay? Because in terms of the way I would think of things as being perfect, in other words, as an English speaker, because there are some ways that you'd have to, I'd have to learn the Greek language and understand all the different ways that it's written and everything for it to come out and say, oh, okay, that makes sense. For me as an English speaker, God made this book understandable to me. So I can look through and I can say, yeah, this makes perfect sense to me. I'm not saying that the original autographs were not inspired or something. Not at all. Of course they were inspired. But what I'm simply saying is to try to trash this English Bible here and say this translation is not as good as the original languages. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. There are certain things that are in this book that you can't find in the Greek and whatever else, even in the right Greek, and it's here. Why? Because I believe that this book is superior to the Greek and the Hebrew. If you think that's a heresy, then go watch another channel. Okay? 
that's my beliefs. Those are the beliefs that I have. And I don't believe I'm wrong for saying that either. I don't think God's going to all of a sudden just lightning bolt strike me dead or something because I hold up this book and say this is God's word. I want you to go away from this ministry saying, hey, I can have authority here, not here. I am not your God. I am not your official holy preacher that doesn't do anything wrong. This book right here, the King James Bible, that's your standard. That's your authority. So hopefully I made sense with that. I know some people are going to take my words and really skew them around and everything else. But uh, these people, you know, uh, you know, they'll come out and they'll say, the Texas Receptus is God's perfect word. Well, that's a problem because there's multiple editions of it. Okay, and they don't all say the exact same things. You know, and what if, okay, the Texas Receptus is God's perfect word and stop using the King James Bible and calling it God's word. Well, you know, Yahushua, Yahushua should be the right word. Okay, then start, start speaking Hebrew, lest you should offend God by using another English word. Messed up. <laughs> but uh, let's continue. Verse 7. Okay, we won't go on to verse 7. I'm just looking, looking over at my notes there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses six through nine. Therefore, we are always confident. How can you be confident if you don't have a perfect Bible? Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. You have to walk by faith. I'll show you another verse. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 19. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in the Bible, no, in unrighteousness. That's what lost people do. That's why they reject this book. They try to find facts against it, arguments against it, so that they can reject it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. What else can I say? Second Peter chapter 3. Well, what did people do before 1611? What did you know, what did people do before the King James Bible was written? Oh, I don't know. It was called the Dark Ages. I think for a region, reason there. People were in darkness. People are weird along those lines. Oh, God's required to have a perfect Bible at all, at all times, everywhere, so that all people can get saved and whatever else. Uh, no, He's not. That's not even consistent with the Old Testament or the New Testament. The Lord wasn't, you know, broadcasting his miracles, live streaming, you know, all over the world. There were a lot of people in North America that didn't even know about Jesus dying on the cross. What about them? They died and went to hell. Why? Because God has it all worked out. And who are you, or and who am I, to question him? I mean, do you have a Bible right now? Can you get saved right now? Well, yeah, but okay, then don't complain about it. You don't have to understand everything that God did. He has reasons for all of it. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Written scripture. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of, the, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Unto their own destruction? Yeah. 
Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Get back to that in a minute. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Well, it's supposed to be about Jesus, not about his word. Uh, you wouldn't know Jesus if it wasn't for his word. So watch out for that satanic argument right there. I worship Jesus. I don't worship the Bible. Well, I don't worship it in the sense of, you know, praying to it or something like that. Um, I write on it, as you can see, I'm highlighting things and writing notes in the side margins. Um, but this is God's book. And I wouldn't know who Jesus Christ is if it wasn't for this book. People are weird. But it says there in verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. You know the weird thing to me? When a new versionist hears about somebody like me, it becomes this mission of theirs that they have to convert me. And they'll tell me I need to read James White's book or whatever, or you, you need to check out so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, it's straighten you out. And whatever. Why? Why are you feeling so necessary to, to destroy my faith in the King James Bible? Isn't that so weird? You want to bring me down. See, I'll go after somebody using, uses a new version. I replace their new version with the King James Bible. Your new version is not perfect. This book right here is. The new version people, however, that are against the King James Bible, they'll take away the King James Bible and leave you with nothing. They'll take it all away. Well, this is the Greek and the Hebrew. That's the true one there. Oh, which edition? Which type? Receptus or Nestle Alon? I mean, which, which one is it? Nestle Alon, there's 28 editions. Which edition? What about Westcott and Hort? Hodges and Farstad and all the other ones out there. What about different editions in the, you know, we'll just kind of pick what you want. You know, you can prefer different versions and not prefer other versions and really? But it's so weird. What are they trying to do? Trying to get you to fall from your own steadfastness. That's what they want. First Peter, or excuse me, First Timothy, chapter six. First Timothy, chapter six, verses three through five. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such, withdraw thyself. Um, hey, you should go and be friendly to James White. I'm not going to be. I don't want anything to do with that guy. Why don't you debate him? I don't want to. <laughs> Why would I, you know, what would be the point? He has his arguments. He has his stands. I have mine. I'm not going to waste any time on that devil. But it's funny because, again, the King James only movement. Um, what do we try to do? Put your faith in one book that you can have as your authority and magnify God's word above his name. That's what we're trying to do. The new versions, constantly trying to tear down the Bible. If you're a good new versionist, you do not believe that your new version is perfect, that you're holding in your hands. Nobody, I have never met anybody out there that says, I believe that the New American Standard Bible is God's perfect, inspired, and errant word. I've never, and truly means it. Okay, they'll say that just because they're trying to act like a Bible-believing Christian. King James only Christian, you know. They'll say these things, but they don't really believe it. Uh, I believe that the message is God's perfect word. No, you don't. None of these guys believe it. All these new version people can do is just uh, do it about questions and strifes of words. And it brings envy and strife and railings and evil surmisings. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Stay away from them. Matthew chapter 15. And here's the best advice. And I just kind of gave it away there, what you're supposed to do with these people. 
Matthew 15, verses 12 through 14. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? The Pharisees were people that uh, held their traditions above the word of God. They would say Trinity. Well, it's not really in the Bible, but we know it's there. And because God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that's not in the Bible. And three persons is not in the Bible either, but we know it's the truth. Okay, Pharisee. Uh, well, we go to church. Okay, I wear my Sunday best. I don't dress like a heathen. And I submit myself to my pastor. <laughs> really? Okay, then you uh, are a Pharisee. You're holding your traditions above the Scriptures. The Scriptures don't say to do any of that stuff. You see my point? The Pharisees got offended. Verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. From such withdraw thyself. We read earlier in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And that's pretty much where we can end it. Right there. Either you believe this book or you don't. Either you're going to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. I know that this is God's word. You give me some argument, I can't answer. I say, well, I don't know. But I know it works. Um, you know, somebody comes along, like I said, and I have a, I have a little thing of camu camu there, and I have my sore throat. I've done this hundreds of times over my life, and I say, oh, um, and they say, what are you doing? I'm stirring up my camu camu here in my water, and I'm going to be drinking this because I'm getting a little bit of a cold. And the guy comes and says, well, that stuff doesn't work. <laughs> really, <laughs> I'm just continuing to stir. Let me, I'll get back to you on that. Drinking it. Hey, I, I told you that stuff doesn't work, you know. And that the product that you have there, do you even know where that particular company is located? No, I don't actually. That's a good question. I don't. I don't have an answer. Well, then because you don't have an answer for me, then that proves that Camu Camu is wrong. See? Just proved it. You couldn't answer me. Therefore, you need to give it up. Uh, not doing that. Because, you see, I've been taking this stuff for years and I know it works. We have some arguments that we came up with against this King James Bible. And if you can't answer every one of our arguments, then you need to give your King James Bible up. No, I'm not going to do that. Because you see, I've been using this Bible for years. And I've seen things happen in my life and I read the Bible and all of a sudden, that's exactly what I'm going through. Wow, you just get chills. You think, wow, Lord. It's amazing. It's word for word what that person said to me. It's just exactly what I'm going through. Right now I'm thinking the same things and oh boy. And I preach a sermon and somebody says, I was praying and asking God for this truth that you just spoke when you were doing the sermon notes. When you were recording that video, I was praying my prayer. Whoa. I don't, I've, I don't even count anymore. I've lost track of how many times that's happened. People writing me and saying, I was wondering about this and I was, you know, I was doing the exact same study and I was looking and thinking, I wonder if this is the truth. And they get on YouTube and they're looking up and they, they don't even know who I am a lot of times. And they look and they find me and they say, and they're looking at it and they're, I can't believe it. This is exactly what I've been seeing in my Bible. He's saying the same thing. Fellowship of the Spirit. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Doesn't mean I'm, you know, just everything I've ever said is right and whatever. No, always follow your King James Bible, right? If I'm wrong, then you correct me here, all right? But uh, some guy wants to come and take the King James Bible away from me and he can find some kind of a thing that I can't answer, some fact that I'm not able to say anything about. Well, okay, you got me on that one, but I'm not giving it up. Uh, new version people, you're wasting your time here. <laughs> okay, uh, King James Video Ministries is never going to become uh, any Bible you prefer ministries or something. Or you know, uh, it's not going to become that. Um, there will never be a point in time when anybody is going to convince me against that book. Never. I will walk by faith. So, um, 
what more can I say? Uh, I am planning to do some studies here in the future on the Bible version issue. Uh, it's been a while since I came out and really hammered these new versions. I know there's a lot of new people coming along, and you might be thinking, what? Huh? Wait a second. Is, is the New King James Version okay? I've seen that in the comments. What about the English Standard Version? What about this? What about that? And, you know, I used to have some stuff on that, and I don't anymore, so I need to really, you know, get some work done on the new versions and really slam them and show that uh, any Bible version that came out since the King James Bible, they're pretty much all completely uh, going back to the Vatican. Um, a big study. You can watch my real Bible version issue exposed study um, on my secondary channel. You can watch that and it'll clear up a lot of the confusion. You can see how the devil conspired to take the King James Bible away from the people. So, um, like I said, please pray for me. You know, if, if uh, you can remember to do that, I will be coming out with some new version videos. And there's a lot of spiritual attacks that come with that. Again, Another reason I know that the new versions are of the devil, I've you know, spent many hours searching the pages of the new versions and going over the readings and everything else and comparing to the King James Bible, and there's a lot of spiritual attack that happens when I'm doing that. Uh, it's not the Holy Spirit trying to stop me either, so <laughs> uh, don't even try that one on me. That would not work. I know the difference between the Holy Spirit and you know, devils out there. Um, but uh, just be encouraged, brethren. Um, you're going to hit somebody eventually that is going to give you a question that you can't answer. You're going to have somebody that's going to come along and they're going to say, hey, you know what? Jesus did this or he did that or whatever else. And we proved that this is, the, you know, the prophecies of the Messiah and he should have done this. Or, you know, we found this ancient thing over here that says that it shouldn't be J, you know, spelling of Jesus or whatever. And they're going to come up with all this big stuff and you just have to look and say, you know what? I've been praying to Jesus for years, and Jesus has changed my life, and I sing praises to Jesus Christ, and I read the King James Bible, um, and my life has improved. I remember what it was like to be lost. I remember how much in darkness I was and how miserable my life was. And boy, how the Lord just brought me out of all that darkness into His marvelous light. And how this beautiful, amazing, blessed book has just, it's my most precious possession. There's nothing like this book. And you want to take it from me? <laughs> no. No. That won't ever happen. That's where you have to get to, brethren. And, uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll have to find some way to answer these people, whatever else. You will get to the point where the Lord will just say, you don't need to know all the answers. What you need to have is faith. The just shall live by faith. Try it out. Just try living by the King James Bible, and you'll see it makes sense. And it'll be a, a great and wonderful thing to do. So, that is going to be it for that study. And um, just another little challenge there for people. Don't let anybody take your King James Bible from you. Okay? We'll see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.